Now welcome, welcome! Hello friends, welcome to a new video. Hello! So, today we are here with another weekly vlog. Hi, who is she? Now listen, I was originally planning video projects, as I do, for the month of July. However, I have been craving some mood reads and not really focusing on reading a ton of books for different videos and really doing anything themed. And so, I am going to go with my heart and with what it desires, and that is to read whatever I want. What I'm going to do this time around is exactly what I did last time. Now, I am a mood reader first and foremost, and that's just the thing. And very similarly to the whole video project thing, I have come to realize that I thrive on set TBRs for a week or for a video and just really reading those and getting through those. I really, I, I do the damn thing when I do that. If I set a monthly TBR though, setting myself up for failure. And so I have set a TBR for the next week or so. Let me run you down what could potentially happen or not, I don't know. And we'll go from there. Now, the first book I put in here is because I've been meaning to read it ever since I got it. And then I went through my litfic era and I was like, I don't want to see litfic no more. And then I reminded myself, it's also magical realism. So who am I to judge myself for wanting to read it? That is for the coffee gets cold. And so I'm going to include this in this week's TBR because I've been meaning to read it. Then it is finally time for me to get through Daughter of the Moon Goddess by Su Lin Tan. I have been so, so pumped to read this and I haven't yet because I I am afraid of not liking it, but it's a stunning book. We're doing the thing. Also, I have got my copy of Lore Olympus Volume 2 coming in. It should already be here, but I haven't managed to get my P.O. Box packages delivered. So I'm hoping that they'll get delivered tomorrow. Today's Tuesday, tomorrow's Wednesday, obviously in the regular sequence that the week goes on, Mel. But I hope that I can get them delivered tomorrow, that I can read Lore Olympus Volume 2 because I'm very excited about it. So yes, I feel like that's the plan for the week. We'll see how much I get through. I hope all of them sincerely, but we'll see. I'll update you when the update is due, but just know it'll probably be tomorrow night. Hi everybody, happy Saturday. So I said I was gonna update you on Wednesday and then I didn't and then Thursday went by and then Friday went by and now we're on Saturday. So this weekly vlog is starting on this fine Saturday and we're here and I've got updates and I've got a nice little book haul to show you guys before we move on to the rest of the vlog. But I was just super busy between Wednesday and Friday. I was doing so much editing, so much video stuff that I was just knee deep into it. I had so many different difficulties with the previous weekly vlog that I put up that was just a whole odyssey to put up and then not only that but one of my best friends came in from college for summer and so we basically just spent all day together yesterday and then today she just left and I've got updates but we did spend a nice day together we binge watched all of Heartstopper and then we watched some of The Boys season two and what else we watched Real Housewives it was great that one it was my idea because <laughs> She doesn't watch Real Housewives, but I really wanted to watch it this morning. However, I have started Before the Coffee Gets Cold, and I am really, really enjoying this. I am currently on page 66. I am on the second story called Husband and Wife, and I really like the concept of this. It is literary fiction, but it's much more aligned with the magical realism genre. We follow a set of different characters who all incidentally have a story to tell within a coffee shop that has been around for over a hundred years, and this coffee 
coffee shop is said and it's sort of a rumor so all of them find that it's actually true based on a need this almost desperation to fix something that happened in their past but it's been a rumor for a while that this coffee shop actually allows you to travel to the past and experience it now there are catches to that i like the fact that it has catches though because the magic have rules there are rules of magic in this and i love it so you can only travel to the past within the coffee shop you can only travel to the past as long as your coffee is hot so you need to make sure that you get back before the coffee gets cold and there are some other rules that you also need to follow in this time traveling motion and i love the reaffirmation in this book of no matter what you do when you go back to the past it won't change the present and there's this feeling of almost you need to come to peace to whatever has happened in the past because regardless of how hard you try that moment in time was meant to happen and regardless of whether it happens in the moment that it did for you initially or not because it could happen later if you change something in the past the moment will still happen and so there are questions still as to okay so i can't change my present but how about if i go to the past i change my present self's future is that a possibility and i like it i like it a lot it feels super cozy it is existential in a way just because it obviously deals with potentially regretting your choices and really wondering what would have happened if you would have done things differently but what is in here is entertaining and cozy enough that it literally makes for the perfect story to read as you go out to a coffee shop as you're having a cup of coffee yourself and i love it like it genuinely feels genuinely is a very cozy read and i am vibing with it which is why because I want to finish this today. I am going to order a chai latte from one of my favorite coffee shops and I'm just going to sit down with a nice chai latte and finish this. So we're going to order that in a little bit. We need to show you a few books that came in the mail. Now, the first one is one that I've been waiting for forever. I was like, have they shipped? Have they not shipped? I was very confused. And this is the Fairy Loot Legend set. It's finally here and it is so, so stunning. I was just highly anticipating these coming in. So we've got Legend by Mary Lou. The foiling is like so gorgeous. We've got the spine. Obviously the spines make up the whole symbol. You've got the back of the book, which says each day means everything's possible again. Ah, oh, the foiling looks so good in this lighting. And then we've got some really, really nice end papers. It is also signed by Mary Lou. And we've got some really great stenciled edges. So that is Legend. After that, we have got Prodigy. Like these are just something else. We've got Champion. Honestly, the foiling in this lighting. And then we've got Rebel. And the stenciled edges on all of them are just absolutely gorgeous. I love this. I love this so much. So I not only got those, I also got, which I'm super excited about, Laura Olympus Volume 2, which I am also hopefully going to read either today or tomorrow because it is definitely on my TBR for the week. I wanted to show you this in the intro, but it hadn't yet come in, so I love this. I got the hardcover just because I loved this cover, and I just I love it, so I got it. Anyway, I also got a few gifts for my booktube birthday from some of my Patreons. They are the loveliest people, but before I show you those, I did get my book of the month box for this month as well, and I got Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Gabriel Zevin, just because it sounded really, really interesting. I also obviously got one of my most anticipated releases, The It Girl by Ruth Ware, and another one of my most anticipated releases, The House Across the Lake by Riley Sager. I am quite honestly thinking of including this book in my TBR for the week, but into the books that some of my Patreons got me, Miss Liz actually sent me three books, which she definitely didn't have to do, but I just want to thank her here as well. And the first one is The Memory Police, which I've been super, super excited to read. One of my Patreons read this, and she absolutely adored it, and I was like, I kind of have to give this a try and just the cover also is super pretty. It is set in an island where things go missing all the time. Hats, documents, books, papers, just everything. And very few people are aware of these changes, but the people who do notice and the people who do know what's happening are incredibly afraid of the draconian memory police, which is the entity in the story that makes sure that these items remain forgotten. And that is essentially the prerequisite for the story, which sounds super interesting. So I can't wait to read that. And after that, she also sent me books two and three of the All Souls trilogy. And then Miss Esme, my Latina queen, hello. She 
she sent me all my rage by Sabata here because one of my patrons also recently read this and she said how much she was enjoying it. And I was like, damn, I really need to buy that soon. And so I added it to my wish list. And then I'd also just seen people absolutely adore this. And it's funny because I don't have, <laughs> I don't have my wish list linked anywhere anymore. And it's funny because my wish list is like on and off open and I didn't realize that it was currently open. And so those just came in, which was quite hilarious. So thank you guys for lurking on my wish list. You really didn't have to. And yes, that is the update for now. I'm gonna go order my Thai latte and I'm going to just sit and read and enjoy some cozy reading time because this week has been so freaking hectic that I just want some peace and quiet for once because haven't been getting a lot of that lately and I just need the <laughs> rest and relaxation. finish before the coffee gets cold and I don't know if it's the day I've had today <laughs> or if it was the book itself or both, but oh my God. Basically all of the stories after the first one had me in tears. And so I've just been crying all day. <laughs> so it is what it is, but this was literally so good. I am giving this five stars. It was a book filled with love and contemplation and a lot of introspection and all of the what ifs, what if I would have said this? What if I would have done that differently? What if instead of this, that would have happened? And it is, I think, a universally human experience what this book talks about, about wondering how things could have played out differently by just altering a simple motion and not necessarily regretting decisions that the characters have made, but really wanting to correct certain aspects of their lives to not only themselves get that healing, but also provide a lot of peace to the people surrounding them. And I think that was beautiful. I think at the core of this book is healing and being able to move into a space with yourself and people surrounding you where you are wholly comfortable with everything. And so that part of the book, I just absolutely loved. I think if I had to choose a favorite story, mother and child and husband and wife were my top two. I think mother and child first and afterwards husband and wife. Both of those just absolutely tugged at my heartstrings and just did things to me that I wasn't expecting this super, super short book to do. But it was amazing. It was emotional. It was cozy. It was beautiful and again existential but i think in a way that it's just a universal experience that everybody goes through at some point in their lives and so i loved it it was really really good i don't typically talk about these things on my channel just because i love having a space where i am at my best where i show my best moments where i am just happy and to go lucky and that's just what i like to put out into the universe out into the world that's my energy and that's just who i I am but the reality is that videos and vlogs and any content that any content creator puts up not only myself is only a collection of curated moments out of a specific 
a lot of time of filming, whether that's five minutes or 12 minutes a clip or 30 minutes for a single video, whatever it is, we only show our best moments. We only show the moments that we edit and put together so that you guys can see them. But the reality is that people don't get to observe the ins and outs of our everydays. And we don't share the most personal of things, not only in fear of people's insensitivity, but also just because of boundaries. Boundaries are so important when you put yourself out on the internet and today I got a comment and I typically don't get very faced with comments I just read them and I either you know reply to them or I don't I try to reply to everything even if it's something that I don't wholly agree with even if it's something that you know could potentially be anxiety inducing I try to reply to everything with the best foot forward and really establish a nice conversation or reply as politely as I can that's just who I am and I've never read a single comment or I've never heard a single sentence with the prerequisite of don't don't want to be rude but that isn't rude. If you know how people could potentially take it as something that could be triggering, something that could be off-putting, something that could potentially be offensive, th there should be at some point the questioning of is this thing I'm asking or is this thing I'm saying the right thing to say? And the person basically inquired <laughs> about my face changing and whether it was a hormonal thing or something and for a minute I think I went through all of the stages of what I could have gone through. I went through the denial and I went through the anger and then I went through the sadness and then I went through just every triggering emotion that could potentially surface but if you've been here for a while then you know that I have mentioned this in the past and I've never felt the need to go in depth with the topic I've never felt the need to explain myself not only because the topic in and out of itself is triggering but also because I don't feel I owe anybody an explanation as to what goes on in my personal life or the things that I experience on a daily and that through therapy I am working to get better at for somebody to come into the comment section and bring up the subject of weight even though I've talked before how I've struggled with disorderly eating and an eating disorder and I told myself I wasn't going to cry I just want people for a second <laughs> to sit down and think about what they're typing up and sending before they actually send it because you never know who's going to find that triggering the subject of weight and the subject of body changes and body appearances and i have struggled so hard with this particular subject matter for the past year and finally when i feel myself getting into a place of being better and feeling better and the word is not discouraging but when you finally feel yourself coming into a place of feeling better Better and doing better and thinking that you are not bothered by those things half as much as you were a few months ago is disheartening I think is the right word and I am thankful I really really am I'm thankful that I'm in a place where I look at that comment and let's not minimize it because there's no minimizing to be done I did cry and I cried for a long time and I, I'm still crying right now <laughs> but I'm thankful that I'm in a place where crying is all that my body wants to do because for somebody else out there this could have been something that could have been a setback people could have relapsed there's so many things that people don't consider when putting that out into the world i just wish moving forward and this is not only about the particular person who commented this but in general i hope that we can all move into a space where commenting about people's weight or weight gain or weight loss or appearance is something that people stop doing why is it that there is always this standard about what people should look like and not only that but if appearances change was it which is wholly normal and whether it's hormonal or whether it's a disorder or whether it's an active choice if people's appearances change for whatever reason there is no need absolutely none to comment on it because even if you have the best intent of the world as to inquiring what has happened you don't know how people are going to take that they didn't think i'd have to deal with that on the internet and that was not on my bingo card for 2022 and yet we're here so i just wanted to get that off my chest say how it made me feel this is what one comment can do and so with that being said and in the hopes of going to bed in a better mood hopefully so i'm going to start and hopefully finish before bed i don't know laura Olympus volume 2 because i deserve to be happy okay i'll see you guys tomorrow morning with some thoughts <laughs>
Oh, a hot chai latte is exactly what I needed after yesterday. <laughs> Good morning, friends. So I'm still not feeling my greatest after yesterday, but a nice chai latte for the soul. And hopefully some reading will make me feel a little bit better. I really don't know what I want to read. I just woke up in a very indecisive mood. And so before I get into that and potentially what I could read, let me update you on Laura Olympus Volume 2 because I did finish it last night. This was so good. I read Laura Olympus Volume 1 and I didn't love it right off the bat. I think it was closer to the last third slash the ending that I was like, okay, I can give this five stars. And you know, it was like a cute moment, but I didn't really love it. And it's not a graphic novel that after I finished it, I just got the feeling of, oh my God, I'm going to recommend it all the time. However, I read this last night in one sitting. It just did everything it had to do. It was funny and it was heartfelt and it was just hilarious, but the conflict is very real. And I love how the author addresses this instead of perpetuating a somewhat issue that people have been talking about in the fantasy genre for a long time. So obviously we have Hades and Persephone in this. It is a retelling. Thing, where Persephone is obviously 19 and Hades is 2000 or so years old. And I love that this graphic novel spends a lot of time with people actively telling Hades, this is a 19 year old girl. You don't get to do that. And then him also feeling that conflict of, I really shouldn't be feeling these things for a 19 year old, which granted, you know, in a lot of countries, 18 years old is the year where people turn legal. I find that the lines are often blurred in fantasy books. And so in that particular conversation, it's hard to say, whether or not an immoral being dating somebody who is of age, recently of age, is either a bad thing or a good thing or somewhere in between. But I do like that the author takes the time to address that because I've never seen that being addressed in a fantasy book before. So it was quite pleasing to see that. I also feel that the illustrations for volume two just kicked it up a notch. Not to say that they weren't beautiful in volume one because they were. I just think this definitely kicked it up a notch in every sense of the word. Here, was also so freaking hilarious in this one. Like she literally stole the show whenever there was a scene with Hera. So I quite liked that. And now we are getting the trope of boss dates somebody within the company. And it's not necessarily secretary, but definitely CEO dates somebody in the company. And I, if done correctly, could definitely vibe with it. And so I can't wait to see how that goes in volume three. I need somebody to yeet Apollo out of this bitch because I cannot stand him whenever he comes on on the scene and I just need him to leave. I don't need him in my book. I don't need him in my eyes. I just don't want him at all. I also love how this sort of includes the celebrity culture behind being a god or being a goddess and having your face on tabloids and the tabloids making up stories, whether they're true or not. And so it was an unexpected side to it, but it was honestly so entertaining as well, just to see how each character took that particular thing happening. And I think also seeing how people react to these specific things allows you to know a lot about who they are and how they conduct themselves in a time of controversy and times of adversity. And so I really enjoyed that aspect of this too. The ending of this, I also wasn't expecting. And so I think it's going to be a really interesting thing to navigate in volume three because uh, Persephone doesn't really know. And if you read this, then you'd know, but she's not very aware of this entanglement situation. And so I think it's gonna be really interesting to see how each of the characters involved in this particular thing navigate it because I think it's gonna cause some drama and I am either ready or not, I don't know. But apparently volume three is also coming out this year in November, so I'm really excited about it. I can't wait to get it, the cover is beautiful. And I also wonder moving forward if we are going to see Persephone develop her powers just a little bit more if we're gonna get to see some of that growth just because she is so young that I can't imagine she knows the extent of her own power, the extent of her ability. And so I wonder if we're going to get more of that in the next few volumes that we haven't really explored in previous volumes because this so far has been very centric on obviously their story as a coupling or as somewhat an item to be. And so I loved this. I personally considered this to be even better than volume one. So volume three is about to be really, really good. That being said, I have three options to start today. I have Daughter of the Moon Goddess, I've got The Stardust Thief, and then I have got The House Across the Lake. However, I don't know what to pick up. I'm quite undecided. I'm quite indecisive today. And so what I think I'm going to do is that I'm going to read the first chapter of each of these and 
come back with thoughts, come back with exactly what I'm going to start and what the plan will be, I guess, for the rest of the week or so. I don't know. We'll figure this out. But for now, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna read some first chapters and see exactly what rabbit hole I'm going down to. Okay, so I've got one wild vin biting her own tail and I have read the first page not necessarily first chapter And I say first page because both the house across the lake and the stardust thief have sort of this preface Prologue this sort of introduction to the story before the first chapter And so I read those and then I read the first page the first full page of daughter of the moon goddess So so this small part right here and then the page after to get a grasp of exactly what I would get writing wise for each story story and after reading all three of these I am going to start Daughter of the Moon Goddess. If I had to rank these as far as how the book starts I think my ranking would be this Daughter of the Moon Goddess, House Across the Lake, and then The Stardust Thief. And in true Books and Lala fashion, let me read you the first sentence of each book. There are many legends about my mother. That's Daughter of the Moon Goddess. It's already a solid start, if you ask me, based on what I like. For The House Across the Lake, it first starts with a Taylor Swift quote. Think he did it, but I just can't prove it. Taylor Swift, nobody, no crime. It was not on my bingo card of Riley Sager books. And the first line is, the lake is darker than a coffin with the lid shut. Not that great of a first line, but then the very last few lines of the first little chapter, no matter how much you look, something just beneath the surface will always remain hidden. I should know. I've been watching. And that was very similar to The Stardust Thief. Doesn't have the strongest start, but it has a somewhat strong ending for the first chapter, neither here nor there, but long ago, which is the tagline for the book. But the very last few lines say, Luli had buried many things since her mother last told her that story. Her name, her past, her parents, but the story, she had never forgotten. So do with that information what you will. I have made my choice. I know what I'm reading today. And that is going to be Daughter of the Moon Goddess. Am I partially biased because I love stories about gods and deities? Yes, maybe. <laughs> but it's time for this. I do have the audiobook too, so I think it's gonna be really, really good. Hi friends, happy Tuesday, hi. Today, it is nighttime already at 7.13 and I have nothing to do. I have officially finished work for the day. I need to tidy up the house and I also need to tidy up, well, the office is a part of the house, but I need to tidy this up too. So I thought it'd be a nice opportunity to listen to my audiobook as I clean everything up. But before I get further into the book, I do wanna update you on Daughter of the Moon Goddess because this is the one I'm listening to right now and it's so good. I would definitely suggest the audiobook. Like the audiobook really puts you in it. It. The narrator is doing a beautiful job. Also for pronunciation's sake, I think listening to the audiobook is phenomenal and I am just having the absolute best time with this book and I am just glad that I'm enjoying this because I was a little bit scared. I feel like I've seen people go either way with either a super low rating or a super high rating. So I'm definitely leaning towards the higher rating because this is everything I'd hoped for. So we follow Xing Yin, who is the daughter of the moon goddess, obviously, except that the people don't know that the moon goddess has a daughter. And so she has been keeping her hidden in her realm for years and years on end. And so one day they are invaded by the celestial emperor and they come here with the pretext of there's some unusual source of power here. 
what has happened because the power here is unusually high and Dumas are not supposed to have that much power. What's happening? And so in an attempt to keep Shingen safe, she tells her to flee, literally, to go anywhere but where she is because she does not trust Shingen staying in the moon realm or whatever it's called. And so Shingen does run away and she stumbles onto the land of the Celestial Emperor where she is pretending to be somebody else. And the advantage here actually is the fact that nobody knows that she exists. So she can go by the same name and nobody will literally know that she is the daughter of the moon goddess. So that part is great. And so she is very much hidden. And the way that she hides is that she essentially forms a bond with the prince. Prince Liwei, and they literally form a bond. She is his steward? Is that what you would call her? She tends to him, makes sure that if he wants tea, you know, she gives him the tea. They train together, and so they essentially have sort of grown up together. And now she gets the opportunity to also train to be in the army. So that is another side of the story that we're getting, and it's all so very nice. I know some people will argue that the romance, well, not necessarily the romance, but the chemistry that feels romantic with Li Wei and Xing Yin could potentially feel very insta-lovey, and I mean, it is. However, it doesn't feel like it to me. It, Even though I know and I'm aware that it is, it feels seasoned, it feels developed, which is a weird feeling to have considering that he literally sees her for the first time and his first instinct is to protect her against all costs. I am very much enjoying them, enjoying their dynamic. He is very, very soft. He is a cinnamon role and I love it. He very much allows her to have her own say, her own do, her own opinion. He always wants Xing Yin to do stuff that she wants to do. He never wants to go against her and her consent, which is absolutely stunning. I absolutely love it. And her back, like she has this constant conflict of I'm being genuine and I am showing him exactly who I am without showing him exactly who I am because he can't know who my mother is. Otherwise, I'll probably be freaking murdered. So I love the tension, but I love the bond that they develop in this book because it's so, so very great. Then on the other hand, apparently this has a love triangle. We have Captain Wynn I've just seen in a couple of scenes and he is very much, uh, I don't want to use the whole Stefan Damon correlation here, but that is kind of what it is. Although I'm not team Stefan, like Stefan was like bland and boring and like not, not good. But imagine like a spicier version of like Stefan. Ooh, evil Stefan without being evil Stefan, if you know what I mean. When he's like unapologetically himself, but he's not too, too soft. I feel like that's Liwei. And then Wenji is definitely sort of the Damon figure where he he is very much sarcastic. He is very much interested in Ching Yin and finding out more about her. And he is very much attracted to her. But he did have some weird comments at first. He was like, I would have never guessed you were a woman. I would have never guessed you fought like that based on how you dress because you're wearing a dress. And so he seems to very much fall under the side of heteronormative roles and societal standards of how women should look like depending on what they're doing, which I, I mean, I don't agree with. But that is who when she is so far. And I'm sure he'll get developed more, but so far that is kind of what we've gotten. And obviously, Xing Yin is on this mission to try and figure out how she can get a pardon for her mother, how her mother can just live peacefully till the end of her mortal days, which is essentially never. And it's everything. The writing is really, really beautiful. The audiobook is even better. Characters are all so great. The conflict is very much present, but I love how the conflict, despite it being present, is not necessarily taking over Xing Yin's life. Like, she is very much aware that she wants to do something about it, but it doesn't consume her every thought. So she is building a life here. She is befriending people in a way that, I mean, arguably she kind of shouldn't because she's going to get attached and something bad is going to happen, but she is still fighting for her mother, which I love. So I know that later on there's going to be a whole conflict about, you know, family duty versus being your own person. But of course, on top of that, there's going to be a whole lot of conflict. And now being a third of the way through the book, I know this is just set up for everything that's going to follow and I hope that it gets more magical. I hope that it gets even more tense. Like I feel it's got some really great opportunities to be even more whimsical, to be even again more magical and to descend into madness and chaos and I'm excited. So we'll see if it does. We'll see if it doesn't. I'm about to sit, well not sit down and read, but I'm about to pop on my AirPods and get some reading done while I tidy everything up because there is a whole lot of tidying up to do. Trust me. <laughs> I finished 
finished this, friends. Hello. So I literally finished this yesterday and yesterday was something else. Listen, so I am finally feeling like myself again, which is absolutely great. Hello. However, yesterday was an absolute mess. It was insanity, literally. I just don't know what happened there. So the landscape right now in Panama is a little bit tough. There's been protests every day. There's been civil unrest and it has been quite a difficult time. There's been shortages of food and there's just been a bunch of everything essentially. And yesterday we actually got a massive thunderstorm. Now the majority of the people didn't even know this was going to be a thing. I think it was drowned out by all of these politics being aired on TV, on the news. And so very few people actually knew that this thunderstorm was coming, but it was reported on July 16th. I certainly didn't know despite being in tune with the news. And so it was a massive surprise when it started raining yesterday at around 4 p.m. And it just picked up out of nowhere. Like the weather was terrible. It was heavily raining, heavily thundering, lightning, just all of it. It was just really, really scary. The scariest part though was the wind because this is not focused on my face. Hi, seeing the videos of things just flying out of people's balconies and into other people's houses and balconies and windows breaking and just glass being shattered everywhere. My own building security gates literally flew in almost into the lobby. If not for a truck that was coming out of the building, it would have literally been final destination, quite literally. And even one of our ceiling windows for the entire building uh, didn't fully shatter, but it shattered enough to the point where that I'm sure if it rains again, because it still hasn't been fixed, that there will be some sort of leakage. So it's been an eventful past 24 hours. I was very rattled last night. I was panicking because I was like, dude, am I going to have to like wrap my emergency bag and just pack Vin up? And so it was not a fun time. I was very much anxious and I went to bed very, very late because I could still hear the wind outside. And for some reason, that made me more anxious. However, today has been a somewhat sunny day. It's still cloudy. Today, we were on the same chance of rain and thunderstorming the same way as yesterday, which is quite scary, but I do need to go out and run some errands. So, you know, I'm going. I'm going with one of my best friends because moral support is where it's at. So we're about to go run some errands. I do want to see if I find a curling iron. Curling iron, curling wand, curling wand. Because listen, I am at a point where my hair is long enough where I don't know what to do with it half the time. And so I just keep putting it up because I don't really want to apply too much heat to it and straighten it. But I also don't like the look of it fully up every single day. My hair is beautiful, okay? And I want to wear it down. And so I want to see if I find a curling wand to kind of give it a little bit more shape without, again, straightening all of it because it's just a lot of work and a lot of heat. So I'll see if I'll find something because curling wands, I haven't really seen. I've seen curling irons with the, the little thing. I guess the other thing also matters because I'm safe, okay? Just reporting, I'm safe. Uh, I'll report you. I'll report you. I won't report you. This is a mess. Oh my God. <laughs> I'll report back again later. Anyways, for the actual updates, I finished this and I loved this and I rated it five stars. This has been a really great reading vlog. I mean, despite all of the, <laughs> all of the chaos, the reading has been great. And you know what? That makes me feel quite good. So this was amazing. I think this book runs the intersection between YA and adult so perfectly. It toes that line just so amazingly that I was in shock reading this because half the time I was like, oh, it's definitely YA. And then half the time I was like, oh, this is definitely adult. And so you get a little bit of both. And I think it meshes both of those age groups in such a nice way, because obviously the way that the stories are structured for age groups are very different. You know, the world building is going to look a certain way and the romance is going to look a certain way. And I feel for me, at least the way that I see this book is the romance was very YA in the way that it was very fast paced, almost insta lovey. And the whole love triangle thing is not something that often happens in adult books. And then the actual world building conflict of it all felt very adult, felt very Priory of the Orange Tree, but like make it more exciting, make it more tense and make it actually make sense. And then obviously with the element of immortal beings and celestials and goddesses and deities and everything, it just made for a very, again, whimsical, just beautiful, cozy story. And I absolutely love 
loved it. I think also describing this as a super exciting, action-packed, yet cozy read is also very spot on because it has its moments of tenderness and then it has its moments of full intensity, but it does both of them really, really great. And so I'm just in love with this. The plot twist for this book also absolutely had me bamboozled. Didn't see those coming and I was listening to my audiobook and I was like, wait, there's no way, there's no way that's what they said. And I had to rewind several times because I was just like, I'm, I'm picturing this in my brain. Like I'm making this up. This is not what they just said. And then I would rewind and I was like, oh, that's totally what they said, huh? And I literally went berserk on my Discord, just updating everybody on Daughter of the Moon Goddess because I was genuinely enjoying this so freaking much. And the audiobook was also really, really good. And I personally, as somebody who doesn't enjoy love triangles a lot, because again, it's not really a love triangle. It's like a choo-choo train of love. And listen, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. In this instance, the choo-choo train of love really worked for me. And I actually enjoyed my time with it. I think both of the love interests had a lot to give for the main character, but also for themselves as individual characters. I think they had great journeys because all of them had a lot to learn. And you know, for our main character, Xing Yin, she really had to learn the power of being herself and not being wholly tied to somebody else and what she needs to be doing out of duty for somebody else. And so all of these lessons for her through love worked beautifully for the story because at the end, you can clearly see the growth that she went through and exactly how she got there. But at the core of this book really is love, really is family, really is relationships and staying true to yourself and fighting for what you know is right. And it was out of this world. And I also think the conflict of this book was so immensely good. And the way that it kept developing, it kept adding to the conflict. It's not only this one thing, there's several different parties and instances going into it. So it didn't feel one dimensional at all. I really, really loved this. And I can't wait to pre-order the Fairloot edition for book two. So yes, another book for the week finished. My best friend is texting me, so I will assume that she's probably here to pick me up. I will update you once I'm back home. Y'all, not me coming into my closet and this is what I find. Miss Ma'am, I can't. This is why I leave the door closed. I cannot trust her. Everybody. So I am back home and I have to update you with some of the things I purchased today. Hello. I found what I was looking for and I actually found something that I was looking to buy on Amazon and I actually found a lot of options here in Panama on the store that I went to, which is I guess like our version of Target. And it's called Arrocha. Love going there, though it's a wormhole. It's a vortex. You go in there for one thing, you walk out with a million other things. Found this popcorn bought it. We'll try it out and see if it's good. Found a curling wand. This was not initially what I was going for. I was looking for one that didn't really have the whole grip thing, but my thought process is that I can just use a screwdriver and take that off maybe. Got some glue tape because now that I'm starting up journaling again, I need to stock up on these because I have run out of a few. And also when I'm annotating my book, sometimes they post it so they don't fall off gotta use these. So, you know, it's always good to have those handy. Hair ties because ever since I've moved, I've lost every single one of them and I literally only have two. Got a styling brush because, listen, if I'm going to be curling my hair or if I'm going to be even straightening my hair, I also put up my hair in buns a lot. I just need a proper brush that can really lay the edges, that can really lay down all of those baby hairs. Let me hook you up on this because if you guys are into skincare, Vichy Mineral 89 to boost hydration. Listen, even if you've got oily skin, this is really great because it's water-based. And if you have dry skin, I have dry skin. This is literally as if your skin just consumed all the water in the world. It feels so, so good. I use this. And on top of this, I put on my moisturizer. Game changer. I haven't used this in a minute. And I need this because my skin has been hella dry lately. And last but not least, I got a drawer organizer because listen, I have got washi tape all over the place. I've got annotation tools all over the place, post-its, and just a bunch of stuff in my drawer. And 
all of it is just like haphazardly thrown in there because I actually don't have enough organizers. So I bought one just because I don't think I'll need more than one. If I do, well, I'll have to go back and buy more. But for now, I'm gonna try and organize everything into its four little compartments. So, well, not little, they're actually quite spacious, but I'm gonna try and sort everything out in these four and figure it out. So let's do that. And I also have a few accessories. Let me just show you while we're here. And it's this right here. It's so cute, it's a little booty. It's just a nice silhouette. And this is technically a, a Voss vase. I'm gonna use this to store pens and hope that it works because I'm kind of tired of, again, let me show you, of these two right here holding my pens. I mean, they're gorgeous. There's no denying that these are the book pots from Illumicrate, but I kind of want to switch it up a little bit. So I'm gonna try out the little booty and see if that works out for me. And we'll kind of go from there. And I think I want to put my bookmarks back in these book pots, or if not, I'm gonna put these book pots in my floating shelves once they're installed next week. But I need to figure this out because this little thing right here that the desk has got going for it is not really working for me. I kind of don't like how it looks. So let's sort some things out and let's have some B-roll. So, Vin is here, she's present and voting, and I am going to end this vlog here. This vlog was a little bit all over the place. I was editing it earlier today, and just a little bit all over the place, but at the very least, we did read three five-star reads, which is amazing. We stayed winning in this reading vlog. Gotta love that, at the very least. So, yes, I hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. Vin is going to fall. Give it a thumbs up for Vin down below if you enjoyed this. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already and if you want to support the channel further I do have a patreon here called the Citadel and there is always a bunch of exclusive content over there you won't want to miss and you won't regret joining and alongside that I have all of my socials linked down below let me know down in the comments what you're currently reading what you've read in the past week any amazing reads any disappointments anything at all that you'd like to share reading wise for the past week do let a girl know if you reach the end of this video let's leave let's Let's leave a coffee emoji for before the coffee gets cold. I think that sounds good. Ooh, a coffee or a croissant? And yes, I love you guys so, so much. And I shall see you on the next one. Bye.